Hey everybody, this is AJ. I am Texas Green Tea on Twitter, and this is the sixth and final video in our series of how to build a dogfighting flight sim game in Unity 3D. And that's a mouthful, and we're almost done. We've got uh, guns that we can fire. Both of the player and the opponent can fire them. They can both explode when they get shot. They can both explode when they crash. We even added in the last video some AI onto the opponent so that he can go into attack mode if we fly close enough to him. He starts to chase us down. Last thing he needs is the ability to know when to pull the trigger. So basically in this last video we're going to uh, set him up so that if his sights are close enough to the player he begins to pull the trigger. Um, and, and so the way we want to think about this, we don't want him to have his sights exactly on the player because that's too small a surface area. He's not going to pull the trigger uh, fast enough or often enough if that's all we do. So we need to set up an area around the player um, that the opponent can use to determine, okay, it's time to fire because I'm close enough to the, the general vicinity of where I want to shoot. Um, so, so to set that up, we need a new collider on the player. We're going to go into his colliders and we're going to add uh, create empty. We're going to call this the enemy AI sensor. And in this sensor, we're going to need a tag, just like we've seen in other cases. Tags are referenced by scripts, and in this case, the script is going to reference a tag called enemy AI. So we definitely need that in place. We need a sphere collider, just like we saw in the last video on the chase sensor. Um, let's size it up so we can see it. Let's go 50. Whoops. 50, 50, 50. Okay. There we go. Um, so anytime the uh, enemy sights are passing through this green sphere, that's when the enemy is going to start to pull the trigger. Um, so, so now that we have that collider set as enemy AI, and we want to remember to check is trigger so that this uh, collider isn't treated as a wall but as a sensor, now we can um, figure out how to get the enemy's gun to recognize when that collider is right in front of it. So let's go to his bullet instantiator because that's where we have the fire gun script. Remember the consider firing functionality in here is already set up for the player. We can use that same functionality for the opponent as well and that's what we're about to do. So if we pop it back into that script, um, remember the bullet object we instantiate uh, from the prefab. The fire rate tells us how quickly we're allowed to fire. That's going to be the same for both the player and the opponent. The thing that's different here is uh, jet type. Sometimes it's the player, sometimes it's the opponent, because each of them have a copy of this script attached to their gun. And so in the case of the player, we saw previously we execute this section of the code. Um, if that's not the case, if if player uh, if jet type dot tag doesn't equal player, we're going to go to this otherwise section, the else section. And here it says, if this gun doesn't belong to the player, it must belong to an enemy. There's no other option. If there's a gun um, and, it, and it's not a player's gun, it must be an enemy's gun. Uh, shoot a ray cast out from the gun to determine whether its aim is near the player. So ray casts are uh, essential tools in our, uh, in our toolbox. Uh, in Unity 3D. We must be able to send rays out into the scene sometimes as sensors. So we have colliders that we can use as sensors. We also have ray casts that we can use as sensors. So in this case we're going to set up a ray cast that fires out of the gun uh, in exactly the direction of the barrel, so along this blue line, and if that uh, ray, kind of like a, a laser sight, if that ray, even though it's not visible in the scene, it acts like a laser sight. If it hits the collider that we set up, this collider on, where'd he go? This collider on the player that we just created. If it hits this green sphere, um, then we know now it's time for the enemy to pull the trigger. And so that's exactly what we're doing with this line of code. Um, now, one thing you should note is that standard raycast dot get tag from raycast. This is, this is actually a script that I've set up uh, in other projects. This is one of the, the things I, I call part of AJ's toolbox. I have in the scripts section, I have 
a bunch of scripts that I've created custom for this project. I also have AJ's Toolbox. That's a bunch of scripts that I find I use a whole lot on lots of different projects. Um, and I'm not using a, a lot of things from this right now, um, but I am using standard Raycast because this is kind of a generic way that I often use Raycasts and I wanted it to take advantage of it right here. So I'm calling that script right here and telling it, hey, here's the, the Raycast I want to create, here's how long I want it to be, and here's the tag that I want it to look for. So it's seeking out enemy AI. If we have a collider that's tagged as enemy AI, this Raycast will say, okay, this condition is met. And then the enemy will consider firing. And just like with the player, we saw that consider firing uh, takes into account the fire rate and then it fires off a bullet if the fire rate is uh, uh, giving it permission to do so. Okay, so now that that's in place, we probably don't need anything else. Let's see if it works. We're going to have to play probably with the size of this collider to, to test the sensitivity. might take a while for the enemy to hone in and get its sights in the right place, but let's see if it works. We're going to hit play. I'm going to drag the game view over here. We're going to select this guy. Wow, he got us quickly. <laughs> uh, let's let's try that one more time. I don't think I've ever seen him uh, <laughs> uh, uh, win that quickly before. Let's try it again. I'm gonna make it harder for him this time. Head out, get some altitude. Caught us in his sights. If I take evasive action a little bit. There we go. So we saw in the previous take that he can definitely destroy us. But he does have to get pretty close. Now, we can allow him to be more effective if we resize our explosion sensor, right, so if our explosion sensor is bigger, let me come out of orthographic view, if our explosion sensor is bigger than, that's interesting, there it is, if our explosion sensor is bigger, then he'll be able to hit us easier, so if we were to resize this guy, um, it, would, it would make the game harder because the opponent would have an easier time hitting us. So there's all kinds of things you can do to improve upon this. Um, there are di different directions you could go with how to continue to flesh out this game. Um, you could do procedural land generation so you can fly off in, in, in an infinite direction without running out of land. Um, there's missiles you could add. There's all kinds of targeting sensors you could, uh, could include and try and play with. We're not going to get into any of those more advanced things in this tutorial. Um, we're going we're gonna to end it off right here, but uh, I want to thank you for joining me on this journey. We, we put together the bare minimum of a complete dogfight game, and it's pretty cool where we are so far. Um, I, uh, I, I want to remind you, I, I, I am available on Twitter. If you have questions, hit me up at Texas Green Tea. Um, and uh, 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 subscribe and like if, uh, if you want to uh, find out when the next tutorial is coming out. Um, and uh, until then, happy gaming.